Today we're headed north of the border to take a look at a comic cartoon from the land of hockey, maple leaves, and beavers, eh? Yeah, I'll stop before I piss off all my Canadian fans. One of the more popular forms of entertainment to come from our neighbors to the great white north would be Lynn Johnston's For Better or For Worse. Her stories of the Patterson family and their real-time aging process gave something you rarely could find on the comics page. While most comic strip characters like Garfield and Charlie Brown are there for us to laugh more than anything, the Pattersons were characters we truly grew up with. We saw the kids Michael and Elizabeth become adults and eventually get their own families, as many readers did the same. Of course, with great popularity comes great criticism, as Johnston received a lot of flack for some of her biggest storylines in the strip, which I'm guessing I'll have to bring up later. Anyway, like the more popular strips in our country of its time, this strip got a number of animated specials and eventually its own series. The bad news is they weren't shown as often as some others because they were primarily made for Canadian TV. Two Ottawa-based production companies made the seven animated specials to air on CTV. The first one aired on HBO for its first American telecast, and then it and all subsequent specials aired on the Disney Channel. As you would expect, a number of these episodes were holiday-themed. The first one, titled The Bestest Present, came out in 1985 from Atkinson Film Arts and was about the daughter Elizabeth losing her favorite stuffed toy over the holiday season and the family's quest to find it, getting help from an old man looking for a reason to still feel good about the holidays. Looks like you was made by a grandma somewhere. To say this thing was cheaply produced was a bit of an understatement. I mean, Michael and Elizabeth in this one were actually voiced by their real-life counterparts, Lynn Johnston's kids, Aaron and Kate. Big reward. That ought to get him. Now, who bothered putting an ad in the paper for a lost stuffed toy? And if it were found, who bothered to send it back? My bunny! My bunny was in the box! Still, I gotta say, it may not have the bold save Christmas for the entire world story that most of the more well-known specials have, but there is a very simple yet poignant story here about finding the good in people and helping a lonely, embittered person see that there is still some spirit in the world. Reward? <laughs> There's no reward better than being with special people at Christmas, Michael. Being with you tonight is the best reward I could ask for. Merry Christmas, Mr. Leatherhouse. The next special wasn't released until 1992, with all of the remaining six specials made by Lacewood Productions from then until 1995. After the second one, The Last Camping Trip, they proceeded to make three straight holiday specials, starting with another Christmas show called The Christmas Angel. This is actually a pretty deep storyline, going to one of the old stories of Elizabeth struggling to get attention as now being the middle child of the family. But with a third act that had the family worried that she might have drowned in a freezing river while she encounters an old lady that might not necessarily be real, there really are some pretty deep overtones in this thing. A log house? I've been over there a thousand times clearing snow. I don't remember any log house. But it was the next one, a Halloween episode titled The Good For Nothing, that I remember the most. The dog Farley was basically the main character in this one, centered around Michael still having to deal with bullies from his younger years. Daddy ain't gonna save you this time, Twinkie. <laughs> Back then, that dog was a hero, and he stayed that way till the end.
This episode actually had a connection to the next one, A Valentine from the Heart, because both also revolved around the same childhood bully, Brad Lugsworth. He makes everybody hate him. Why does he do that? It's hard to say, Mike. Sometimes people who don't like themselves don't allow anyone else to like them either. This is one thing I always admired about Lynn Johnston's work, as she really tried to give almost every character depth and show that everyone can have a good side to them. So, uh, what kind of pizza do you like, Brad? The last special, A Storm in April, basically retold the story of the birth of their third child, April, who was the only one of the Pattersons not based after an actual member of the Johnston family. As someone who's read the whole comic series and watched this show, I will say it basically takes the entire story almost word for word from the pages, but as I'll explain later, that wasn't really a big issue here. At any rate, in 2000, Funbag Animation agreed to produce a new series based on the strip that aired on the Canadian network Teletoon. The series was made as pretty much a retrospective of the strip itself and the growing up of the characters. Each episode of this series contained three shorts, one from each of the three main decades that the strip primarily took place in. So each episode showed small examples of the Patterson family as they grew and aged. And again, a number of the shorts were taken straight out of stories from the strips. But you gotta remember, younger viewers who didn't buy the collection books probably wouldn't know that. So the show was a way to reintroduce such stories, like the time Michael traveled on a plane alone for the first time. Hi, Michael. My name is Sarah. I'll be your flight attendant today. You make yourself comfortable. I have to go help some other passengers now, but I'll sit with you during takeoff, okay? Okay, seriously, are all comic strip boys born without the cootie-fearing gene? See, this is why we needed a Foxtrot cartoon show. I just want to say goodbye, Michael. It was a real pleasure flying with you. You just know that one night, years later, Deanna woke him up and demanded to know who Sarah was that he was dreaming about. But even a number of the original shorts tied into not just the strips themselves, but some of the more daring stories that Johnston went after. Not only did they actually make an episode involving a gay pride parade, but it harkened back to when Johnston revealed that Michael's oldest friend Lawrence was homosexual and the issues he went through. This was a pretty big risk for Johnston to take in a comic strip back in the 90s, and she got a lot of divisive response to it. Michael, you have always been there for me. Who better to support me in my hour of need? What's thou saying no? <laughs> there was also a shout out episode to how the first dog Farley passed away. No one knows how long Farley held April's head out of the water. He saved her life. And Edgar? He ran back to the house and barked until they followed him down to the river. It took her a long while to get over it. I wasn't even there. They phoned me at school and told me he was gone. That his heart gave out with the effort? I never said goodbye. And I've got to say, hearing years later what the reader reaction to that storyline in the comics was, was really shocking. Johnston wanted to create a scenario where Farley could go out a hero. But a lot of viewers turned it around and tried to paint the Pattersons as negligent parents as a result of it. Check out the collection book starting from scratch for the story and make your own judgment. I mean, it's not like the readers made any other harsh judgments about any other storylines or anything. You're pretty mad at me, eh? Oh, uh, Lizzie, I can never really be mad at you. Oh, good night, no. Yep, it looks like I'm not gonna be able to avoid talking about this. Elizabeth's on and off boyfriend, Anthony Kane, is one of the most disliked comic strip characters in history, if the online opinions are to be believed. And his biggest crime? Being a nice guy! 
okay, that's a generalization. But it is really disheartening to see how many people despise the fact that he was supposedly a boring guy with a go-nowhere job at Gordon's garage and that Lynn Johnston supposedly has her characters shilling him over the supposed better-looking, more exciting guys that Elizabeth really should have been with. They hated the fact that the strip's main run ended with Elizabeth marrying Anthony after she supposedly forced his marriage apart to a woman that was never there for him instead of going with the guys who kept cheating on her or leaving on jobs that required their helicopters or something. Because we all know women should go with the men who will bring them danger and adventure rather than the ones that will actually be there for them. Right? I'm sorry, people are entitled to their opinions, but all the extreme Anthony hate just bugs the hell out of me. And yes, I know the marriage was supposedly shoehorned in at the end because Lynn Johnston wanted a happy ending to counter the falling apart of her own marriage, but still, Anthony to me represents the good guy that is supposed to get the girl in the end. And maybe that's not realistic for a supposedly realistic comic strip, but neither is the assumption that any of Lizzie's other boyfriends would make her happy in the long run. Sorry girls, but the guy who looks like a heartbreaker is almost certainly going to break your heart. And the nice boring guy you dislike so much? He's the one you need to give a chance to, unless you want a lifetime of bad relationships. And I'm sorry if I'm going off complaining about this, because actually, there's not a lot for me to complain about with this show. Overall, I have mixed feelings about this cartoon show. It does a really good job of showcasing the comic strip and its characters, but it never really went over the top with anything really new, creative, or outlandish, and that may be why it didn't last past 16 episodes. Still, it wasn't really made for U.S. audiences, so maybe I'm not one to judge it too much. It does seem like it was made primarily for fans of the comics, and I guess in that case it did its job, and probably got the right length in the end. All of the series episodes and the specials are available on DVD, direct through the comic strip's own website. And yeah, I'm sorry I didn't have a lot to rant about with this show, but you know what? I kind of like the fact that we get to end the Summer Spectacular on a real positive note with a decent cartoon show. Wah, 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 what? Wah, wah, wah. what do you mean we got one more? Wah, 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 wah. Oh no, not that! If I'm going to be reviewing that show, I'm going to need backup! Come on. Huey Toonward got one of these things to work, and so can I!